Hello, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Life with Lizzie show. Um, I am just like recovering from a cold. So if I sound like sniffly or like, you know, make some noises, I know it's not like really pleasant. I'm gonna try my best to edit what I can out. But you know, we just got to do what we got to do because I got to get a podcast episode out. And honestly, um, I'm kind of excited about this episode just to kind of um, lay out the things that's been going through my mind the last week um, and all the things that I've just been feeling within my life. <laughs> I think that's what this podcast is like for now. I do have a vision for it, which we will talk about through this episode. But like, I really am enjoying this space to just feel like I could talk about whatever I want. And for some reason, I feel like I need to set a standard for it, like on the certain topics we talk about, and that might come with time. But for now, I'm pretty much enjoying just speaking on what I want to speak about and saying what makes me feel good to get off my chest. And then there's always somebody um, or sometimes multiple people that come to me after listening to a podcast episode and it shocks me how like I don't want to say like I touched people but just how I was able to connect with people um and I and I have this feeling in my head that like nobody really cares to hear it and it's like that anxiety thoughts no one's really listening or you know just even the last episode it was 45 minutes long and it had 19 viewers or listeners or whatever and I was shocked I truly was I did not think anyone would listen to that I thought it was way too long but at the same time it was what needed to be said and then multiple people listened to the entire thing and I was like wow people really you know people care what you have to say you know and especially when it's things you're passionate about and things that like your experiences nobody can validate your experiences and the things that you've went through you know and so something I've been going through so if you listen to the the last couple episodes we've done episodes on uh trauma in general like how to heal from your trauma as far as um or using trauma to like learn and grow in life type of thing. Um, we talked about my birth trauma. I've also talked about my journey to holistic healing. So honestly, I feel like this podcast so far, I'm just more kind of opening up about all of my life experiences and how they've kind of shaped me into the person I am. And that's kind of what I've been feeling within my my heart lately. Um, is that something I was thinking um earlier, I was sending a bunch of voice clips to one of my closest friends, Mackenzie. Um, and I was, you know, we talk about trauma and I, I feel like I've used the word trauma a lot. Okay. Sorry. How many times can I say it? But I was not just trauma. It's just life experiences. You know, the things that you went through because not everything is necessarily traumatic. Um, but some of it can all like build up to feel like a very like, trauma filled life where you kind of realize that a lot of the ways that you respond, react, the way you think stems from the things and experiences that you went through in life. And so I was sending these voice clips to Mackenzie and I was kind of like just working through my thoughts and I was like, you know, sometimes I feel unworthy, especially there was a hot minute there recently, like very like in the last month where for a few, like two weeks maybe, I felt completely worthless. So I don't even know how to really describe how that felt. Um, It was the, I didn't want to die. And this is like going on such off topic. Like literally we, I've like jumped from story to story to like get my point across. It's not adding up, I'm sure, but just bear with me. So I was not really feeling the greatest mentally. I haven't been for a hot minute. And, um, I just would get this pit feeling in my stomach, but not like a a pit feeling I've ever had before. It was just, it was kind of like in between my stomach and my chest. And, um, I, uh, you know what I would actually say, like a physical description of how I could describe it is it actually felt like my heart was breaking, you know, not like a heart attack, but like, um, I felt like my soul was being like hurt and stepped on. It was very, like, a very realistic feeling of just feeling worthless. It was so weird, and, um, and so, you know, there was moments where I was just thinking that, like, there is no point of me sharing my story, that people are probably tired of hearing me. Uh, People probably think I victimized myself. People probably think all these negative, ugly things about me, and I'm the type of person that try, like, 
I wouldn't even say tries. I genuinely don't give a crap like what most people think about me. I don't care because I've come to this point where I've been pushed around and went through so much that I was like, I'm tired of living my life for other people. Doesn't mean to say like, obviously, I just had that, you know, moment in my life where I was like really thinking that people just didn't care and everything in my life was fake. And, you know, I didn't even feel like I knew who I was. I felt like I was losing my identity. I really... Um, I really didn't like that feeling at all. Just feeling like I didn't know what I even wanted in my life anymore. Um, it's been crazy, but the reason I bring all that up is because thinking back to the trauma and what I was telling Mackenzie, the, my mindset has, you know, kind of reshifted. I feel enlightened a little bit again. I feel kind of back on a right direction Um, you know, I'm still sorting through some things, but since feeling a little more positive and feeling, you know, that things are going to be okay and, and my life is not the worst and, you know, I'm going to be fine and I'm going to turn out so much stronger in the end that I, you know, it always happens, you know, anything you come out, um, of, if you can just come out a little bit stronger, you know, that's the goal for me. So, I kind of have been shifting. And um, so I was explaining to Mackenzie on his voice clips that, you know, now I feel, and I felt this way before, but I kind of feel it more on a spiritual level that, you know, I don't know God's plan. You know, most of us, I mean, we don't. We can tell when God's leading us in in a direction or you know, I know when God speaks to me directly, it doesn't happen all the time. It happens pretty rarely, to be honest. But there's things I know it's like a God thing. But at the same time, I don't know everything, right? So, like, I don't know, uh, per se, if God has, you know, purposely had this um, every single difficulty in my life purposely with the intention of me coming out stronger and to share my story and help other people. Um but that's kind of how it feels. And not to say like God is like purposely putting me through bad things. I'm just saying that like, I feel like it's a part of my life purpose, right? I feel like my vision for my life, I mean, there's so many like little details or, um, you know, pieces to the puzzle, but the general consensus, the general like, (laughs) <laughs> mission statement for my life per se, okay, is to help other women, period. Um, but there's obviously, like I said, so many little umbrellas under that. And so for me, um, what I've been going through is feeling like the things that I went through, f- for instance, with my son, Anakin, you know, um, I think we know by now, like if you listen to the other podcast episodes or if you've been following me on social media, that, you know, things really just had a, an, an, an impact on my mental health for the last year plus since I had him. And um, I love my son. I never want to make it seem like I'm blaming him. None of it. That's that's not what that is. But I have been enlightened on a new level of kind of the things that women go through. Um, and it wasn't until I became a mom that I really saw the bigger picture. You know what I mean? It wasn't until I became a mom that I really realized women are still being oppressed and abused. And I mean, of course, we knew abuse was going on domestically or whatever, but I'm stating that I feel like women are still looked at on such a low level and that so many women are afraid to stand up for what they believe in. I feel like women, um, not in general, not every single woman, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? Like, I think we all know a lot of times us women try to avoid confrontation. I think that's why a lot of people get kind of like <laughs> sideswept by my approach. I'm kind of, ugh, I'm kind of direct and also intense and a little bit non-apologetic for what I believe in. I'm not saying I'm always right. Sometimes I feel like I am. Again, I am not. (laughs) But it's because I got to that point where I was like, I am no longer going to be afraid to be upfront and to be honest and to make the decisions that I have to have. So like specifically, that really kicked in when I had my son. 
you know, I didn't realize until recently how much motherhood has really changed me. But like, there was obviously the bad moments, but honestly, I have just evolved into a completely new woman. And I'm not to say that anyone that's not a mom isn't a woman, but like I said, I saw the bigger picture. It was like you just, you understand the majority of the population more because now I'm a mom. You know, there's a lot more moms than there aren't, I think. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I feel like there's probably a lot more moms, right? In the population, there's grandmas, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to thank all the generations. Of course, there's more moms. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so um, so once you become a mother yourself, it's like all of the frustrations and the anxieties and the things that, you know, we we went through during our pregnancies, during our labors, during our births, during our postpartums, during the journey of just becoming a mom, you know, you realize all these other women are going through too. And then if you so happen to be the woman that can just, you know, like for me, for example, not to put me on a pedestal, I'm not better than anybody, I swear to goodness. (laughs) But you understand where I'm coming from in the sense that like, I just got to that point where I was like, enough's enough. Like I, I'm not gonna be afraid to kind of stand my ground on certain situations like especially when it came to family like I wasn't I'm not gonna allow anyone to talk down on me or um to treat me like I'm a child you know I'm a grown woman and um you're gonna respect the decisions that I make for my child you're gonna respect the decisions that um you know I make for my birth and the just all the things like it doesn't matter it doesn't even have to do anything with my like my kids or you know myself it could be anything um you know it doesn't mean I don't feel like anxiety or sometimes have a struggle with confrontation but for the most part like I feel like I have um I've just become a lot more firm and um a lot more (laughs) fed up (laughs) fed up's probably a good word fed up with just um I don't want to say not having things go my way, but like feeling like I wasn't an advocate for myself, that I feeling like I couldn't be the person I needed to be for myself. Because, you know, have you ever seen there's like this, I don't know, there was a status on Facebook forever ago or like a meme. It's like be the person like your younger self needed you to be. You know what I'm saying? Like younger me needed me to stand up. Younger me needed me to be confident. My younger me, gosh, you know, as much as I beat myself up and I know there are things that I definitely have to work on. Like I know younger me would be so proud because I was not this person. Like I, I mean, most of y'all know me from the internet, right? Um, even if you knew me from school, you probably didn't pay enough attention to me to really know or remember or whatever. But um, for those of you who do, I'm sure there's a few of you that listen that, you know, were close with me in high school and in the younger years that I, um, <laughs> I mean, I was a kid, of course I'm going to be different, but I was just not even anything remotely close to who I am now. Um, thankfully, <laughs> um, I am, I'm, I like being who I am now and I'm glad that the way I felt as a teenager didn't continue fully into adulthood like forever um because that does happen to people where you know they were shy and intimidated and um they didn't have any confidence as a child and then that continues into adulthood and so that's how I was though you know um I've always been overweight and I was always uh picked on I actually was bullied pretty much my entire school years even by teachers like it was (sighs) And that's how, that's like something when I think about like the things that I went through, um, I almost like sat there and questioned myself the other day. I was like, do I really victimize myself or has this just generally been my life? Because even in like 12th grade, (laughs) there was this one teacher that we had and I was like, I never went to ISS or anything, you know, like I never actually got like in trouble, trouble, but teachers just, 
they would just like not answer my questions like my hand would be raised for like 30 minutes I'd be like am I invisible I swear to goodness I thought I was gonna go insane this one time because like for a whole day none of my teachers like it was I genuinely thought I was invisible I was like tripping out I was like this this is not making any sense where I was like raising my hand or was it like supposed to be like national like don't answer your students freaking uh, questions day I don't know my point of saying all this is is that (laughs) I've always felt like I wasn't likable by everybody friends fan well not well yeah I guess friends but like you know kids at school teachers I never felt like I was really accepted by people and I just always wonder what was wrong with me and you know just I just had a lot of things going on you know as a kid in my home life as well like with the violence and like you know alcoholism and all those things that it just kind of made me this really like I don't know depressed isn't the word because I went through grief at a really young age but just like a kid that just didn't know herself like tried to fit in didn't know how to fit in couldn't fit in if she tried anyway which fitting in you guys I don't know I doubt I have any young viewers hopefully not but you know fitting in is just not cool like really who gives a crap like I do not care about fitting in anymore and I just I hate that kids do care so much about it and I hate that I spent so much of my childhood and teen years being so concerned um over what other people said about me anyway this podcast is getting really like sidetracked the point of me bringing up all that is is that my life has just been like a constant like you know of learning and and navigating battles and I always feel like I don't I I feel like I've never caught a break from survival mode even now I really genuinely don't because I feel such a optimistic turn on life and I'm thankful that I'm feeling really great mentally but like our truck just broke down and we have no idea when we're gonna be able to get it fixed you know and um I'm without a car because my husband had to take my car you know so like there's still things going on I'm just choosing to try to be more optimistic with it but I just feel like I've went through all those things you know to just help other people people you know, go through it. I actually saw someone, you know, you see these quotes all the time on social media, but man, it was like really, really spot on the exact quote that was shared. I got to go find it. I wonder if this will record. (gasps) It will record while I go on Facebook. Oh, snap, because I know exactly who shared the picture. The, The post says, one day you will tell your story of how you overcame what you went through and it will be someone else's survival guide. And that was when I felt like it almost like clicked for me in my brain that, you know, when you go through things and if you came out of it and you came out of it better and stronger than before, And you didn't share with people how you came out of it. Like, I'm not going to sit here and call you selfish, but I will sit there and say that, you know, why not share how you got through those things? You know, why? Because what if you had somebody that could have been there for you when you were going through that? Because I think a lot of us go through those things. Okay, I am back. Um, I do not know exactly where I left off and I have such bad service. It's not letting me (laughs) re-listen. So I think I know where I left off, but I was having multiple interruptions. So I had to stop the clip and it's the next day. <laughs> um, so I think I was talking about, and sorry if any of it's repetitive, um, but, you know, talking about just, I think uh, that's why maybe I'm, I'm so able to like vocalize the things that I feel or like I am a natural at telling my story because or that's why I went through those things because I I have the talent to, and I don't even like calling it talent, but y'all get what I'm trying to say, right? Like I was just, it's something I was meant to do. Like I was meant to share my story. I was meant to go through things and, and share the outcomes and like educate and help and just help women in general. Um, but through all those things. Right. And I mean, even in, um, with, without just, you know, telling my story about all the deep stuff, like you guys know, or maybe you don't know, (laughs) I went through like a major health journey, uh, losing 85 pounds. You know, I started drinking ketones right before I got pregnant with this baby. And I have helped, you know, so many people, like dozens and dozens of women start their journeys to better, of feeling better. And, you know, 
um, feeling their best and finally having energy to be the best mom they could be. And, and so that's just my total life mission, right? I also want to say something. Um, I'm really glad I saw this quote. I know I shared the quote yesterday, um, or on this podcast, but it was when I was recording yesterday about how, you know, one day you will tell your story of how you overcame what you went through and it will be someone else's survival guide, right? Well, that really struck with me, right? But then I read this quote and it was also something I've really been feeling in my soul. Uh, this quote says, the moment a child is born, the mother is also born. She never existed before. The person existed, but the mother never. A mother is absolutely new. And I really feel that to my soul because really, you know, when I had my son, it's not that I, you know, lost everything about who I was before, you know, um, a lot of those foundational pieces are there, but truly I felt like when I became a mother in this last, like a little over a year, I have had to kind of reinvent myself or like kind of relearn who I am because I have noticed, you know, through the developments in the stages of, you know, your children's childhood and, you know, just learning how, um, you want a parent and kind of having to open your eyes to a lot more things going on in the world. Like I felt like as soon as I became a mom, I think I mentioned this early on in the episode. I'm so sorry if I'm repeating myself. But that like you start to see other people's perspective and you start to be a little more vulnerable to um, opening up to things and learning things. And because you have a new baby to protect, you have a family to look out for and no one else is going to look out for your family like you are. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like motherhood is really it's been like a contradictory thing like within me, like part of me (laughs) of becoming a mom has I felt like empowered me and enlightened me on such a like deep level. And then there's a part of me that feels like it's a very confrontational um, thing because a lot of people don't like to hear the actual truth and not to say that everything I say is the truth, but I'm sure a lot of you will understand what I'm saying. Like if you, you know what you know is right and there, you could tell someone the grass is green and they're going to scream it's blue. Like if they've been, you know, manipulated enough or brainwashed enough or just convinced enough or simply that's just what they believe in for whatever reason x y and z and this could be applied to anything um then you know it can feel like confrontational uh bringing those things up and so there's been a part of me that's been conflicted on like how do I go about sharing how I feel about certain things without coming across like judgmental because that's not what I want it to be um it's just that listen I'm high strung okay I when I see people going through things that they don't have to go through if they like just like you know what our parents did to this I'll be honest it is I know and it's annoying too because I I wouldn't want to hear you know people's crap now that I've went through certain things in life I'm more open to hearing people like give their opinions and stuff but um you know just like our parents say like you know you'll understand one day why I'm saying the things that I'm saying or you'll understand one day like what all this is going to mean and I think a lot of times we have to even as women as mothers you know any scenario in life, but you know, that's kind of what I'm on the topic of that. Sometimes we end up going through birth trauma, or sometimes we end up going through, um, you know, just really crappy things in our pregnancies and postpartum experiences. Like you might be dealing with like a psycho mother-in-law that is literally trying to control every single thing that you do with your child. And it's making you lack confidence as a mom. Like there's all. I think a lot of us are always going to end up going through something and not just with the first child, probably consecutive children, because there's always going to be something new. Every child is different. Every, um, you know, time you have a kid, it's you're at a different time in your life at a different age. You've learned more. You've you're going through different experiences. So you're going to react differently. Um, so my point is, though, a lot of us will end up going through a lot of crap um, and it doesn't matter how much. Well, it does matter. I was going to say it doesn't matter how much someone tells you, but I will say I think repetition um, just from like hearing it from outside sources really has like helped um, with pretty much anything. Um, 
you know, like if you have a friend telling you like, you need to stand up to your mother-in-law or whatever, I'm just going to, cause that's like a really easy example. Cause I'm, I don't have my mother-in-law, like I don't have any in-laws really like that. <laughs> They're like all kind of like non-existent. Um, so I don't deal with that, uh, kind of a blessing in disguise for me, but you know, for the people that have that, it's just an easy example. So say I'm over here, like I'm your best friend. I'm like, listen, she is being so rude to you. She is like doing things to your baby that you don't feel comfortable with. Like, you know, you have to stand up to this person. You know, I can't force you at gunpoint to do it. Like you have to finally have been basically, I say brainwashed loosely because brainwashed can literally mean like you're actually brainwashed in a bad way. But even Jesse Lee, my mentor, she says it in like a good way. Sometimes you have to brainwash people to finally get it through their head that like you have to stand up for yourself. You have to do what you have to do. You have to, you know, embrace who you are, not be afraid about it and own your shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think women and not just women, but, you know, people deserve to be heard and to be respected. And that just goes for anything in life. And that's like, again, my mission in life is to help women and to just, I feel like me sharing what I was going through, it's not, I'm not here to completely convince anybody to just do what I say or follow what I've done or whatever. But I do hope that, you know, if you are on a similar journey in life that I've been through, you have felt similar experiences as me, that over time, as you listen to this podcast, or maybe you go to listen to other podcasts, or surround yourself with people that are really just trying to share those experiences to help, you know, other people not go through that again. Um, you know, you get to a point where you finally kind of open your eyes. And that's what I think happened with me. Like, um, I think I've, I think I've said this in a podcast episode, Lord y'all, I can't remember where I say things or when I say things like (laughs) I can't remember who I tell what to half the time. But, um, you know, I've said that when I was pregnant with my son, you know, something that I researched because of outside sources, because I had friends, I had people in my life that reached out to me and offered to educate me like literally. And I'm honestly shocked that I even was open to the, um, these conversations just because I can't, I, I can be a stubborn person that doesn't want to be open to things, but like, I guess I've been working on that. So, um, you know, there was just a lot of things that when it came to your baby, like the health of your child, the well-being of your child, like very, I don't even want to talk about it on this podcast, but if you want to talk to me more about it, you can always message me on social media and we t- chat about it there. But just, I was researching everything when it comes to the baby. Like when you're at the hospital, what are the procedures that they do on your baby? What are the, the blah, 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 blah. I just didn't research much of anything else. Um, I knew I wanted like a natural labor and all these things, but I didn't research any of it. Right. Um, but all of that kind of came to me because people in my circle that knew more than me on those topics, you know, asked me like, Hey, like I, do you plan on doing this? And I said, yes. And they're like, well, maybe you should watch this documentary. Like, you know, I'm not going to judge you either way, but will you at least just watch this documentary and like before you make the decision or will you at least research this before you make the decision? You know, it can be very um, uncomfortable people coming in your life and doing that. Um, A lot of, there's certain things like I will know straight, (laughs) straight say no to, but you know, I'm really, really grateful for those people. And sometimes I'm not ballsy enough to reach out to people that I'm close to and, and straight up say like, Hey, like, are you going to do this? Because it's not really my business, but at the same time, like if you know, something is morally right and morally aligned and you really care about somebody, then, you know, you bring it up. And I think people do that on all spectrums of everything. You know, like I think the pandemic has been a perfect example of how extreme each side of whatever can be and how each side tries to influence the other. So, um, I don't know how we got so off of this on this topic. Uh, I think the point of me saying that was, <laughs> is that, um, you know, now I want to, uh, I, I'm been more open to just learning from other people's birth experiences. And that's been like a big thing for me lately, um, is researching all that. And it's just been like, I don't want, um, 
like going forward, like I, I don't know what exactly, again, this podcast is going to specifically be like if it, I don't see myself turning into like some doula or birth expert, but you know, I had a girl message me the other day saying she's really afraid of being pregnant and, and she's scared of birth. And I felt that on a level, you know, um, when I got pregnant with this baby, I was like scared out of my mind, um, to have to go through all that again, um, uh, especially because of what I went through before. And, um, I just was like, you know, I kind of feel like I, the more I learn, the more I educate myself, the more I would like to just speak on this topic of just, you know, I don't want to say what is women's health, like the right term. Is that like a little too general? I don't know. Um, but just, you know, share the things that I know and share and interview other women that, you know, have had these experiences and, um, have the proper education on like physiologically normal things that, you know, happen to us, uh, whether that be birth and pregnancy, whether that be mental health, whether that be your menstrual cycle, like, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't think I'm going to be a woman expert, (laughs) But I just want to help women like, you know, that's just where I'm at in my life. I just feel like that is, you know, there's so many ways that I can help, um, whether it's the business that I'm in, whether it's the podcast that I'm recording, whether it's the posts that I write and whether it's the conversations that I'm having with people and, you know, the things that we are working through together. I just... I see that being like my future. And for some reason, I mean, I say for some reason as if I don't know the reason, but, you know, having being pregnant um, just the second time has, I felt like put me on this like next level, <laughs> next level of motherhood um, where it's just, a, it felt like such a crazy beginning but now it's just, I feel like empowering me more. And like, it's like, oh, I feel like I see myself really like just being an advocate for all the things. So that's just kind of my mission. Um, I feel like this podcast was like absolutely completely all over the place, but that's also, I guess, a part of my mission because that's literally who I am. And there's a part of me that really wants to work on my etiquette and like just, staying on topic and whatnot. I don't know. Do you guys enjoy like the little side things? <laughs> do you, uh, do you like being like super on topic with stuff or do you also enjoy like a little side conversation of, you know, other things that kind of play, obviously play into a effect of the conversation to some extent if it comes up, right? Um, it has some type of like, you know, support, but not the main topic. So, you know, I appreciate all of you that listen to this podcast. Y'all, today has been crazy. Like, I cannot get my words together. But I do appreciate everyone that listens to this show and subscribes. And uh, if you ever would love to give it a five-star review or whatever kind of review, I can't tell you to give a five-star. But if you really do like it, I would appreciate that. Let me know how you're enjoying it. Uh, Share to your social medias if you feel like you have friends that would just enjoy hearing me talk about whatever. Um, I think I do want to do um, an interview soon with somebody uh, I don't know which one I'll be doing first. I have a couple people in mind. So I'm going to kind of like brainstorm about that and what the topic will be. And hopefully that'll be our next episode is like having an interview or um, maybe in the next couple episodes, maybe once the new year comes, probably in January. Uh, I wanted to be doing like a lot of or more frequently uh, interviews with people. So different women, of course, it's always going to be women and you know, it's not that I don't want men on the podcast, but I feel like this is a safe space for women, don't y'all? Like, I want this to be a safe space for women that you feel like I can sit here and talk about, like, period blood or something. I mean, TMI, gross. Some women don't like hearing that. To me, I'm kind of, like, shocked. I'm like, look, I want to be able to talk about all that. Like, I need women to talk about these issues I'm going through. (laughs) But, you know, you get my point. It doesn't have to be, like, menstrual cycles. It could literally be anything. Maybe even like sexual stuff. And also don't take that in a weird way either. I mean like, you know, finding confidence in the bedroom. Like I don't have much. I'll be honest, I've been with my man for like eight and a half years. I don't even have that much confidence in the bedroom. Like I need to find somebody that can come on this podcast and teach us how to have confidence in the bedroom. Because a lot of us lack in that. You see what I'm saying? Like I want to empower women in every single way. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I hope that wasn't like too intense. Um, I feel like I need to go ahead and end this. I don't know when I'll get this up because my service will not let me like edit on Anchor. Uh, it's like, it takes too long to load, I guess. So it'll get up when it gets up, but I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And, uh, I really do hope y'all continue to enjoy this show. See you on the next episode.